Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's Week in Review, we're mainly going to focus in on the US. It's been a very quiet week for data outside of the world's largest economy. Unusually, it's been a week packed full with jobs survey data. We've had the NFP today, the non-farm payrolls, but the week really started with a jolt, and that is the jolts data, which is a labour survey, survey data for both openings, hires and quits. So Matt, if we go the high road back from the NFP via the ISM, and then we've also had the ADP and now we're at the jolts, yeah. what do you think the jolts data told us at the start of the week? Yeah, so I think, Kevin, what's probably important to think about the US is just some context as to where we've come from and where we've arrived. So um, unemployment in this current cycle bottomed on um, in March of 23 at 3.5%, slightly higher than that now at 42 So although that seems like a fairly significant rise, if we think about that in a historical context, the average employment rate from 2000 to 2019 was 5.9%. So although we have seen that rate tick a little bit higher, we're still... Have Materially a below. Yeah, yeah, we still got tight labour markets in the US. So just coming back to the point you were making before about the jolts, what we've seen, well, we've actually seen the number of job openings within the US start to cool. That's from a pretty elevated level following COVID. So obviously the economy reopens, firms and corporations are looking to hire people to start activity again. So we've seen quite a high rate. Really what we're seeing is that rate just moderate back down to what we've seen in 2018, 2019. And, and of course, we're four years into the recovery here, aren't we? So yes. it's perfectly normal that we see a slowing in, slowing in jobs growth as employers really have full employment and the, the jobs market is probably back in a much healthier balance. Yeah, and that's you know to do with some of the rise we've seen in the unemployment rate is just firms' intentions for hiring have started to cool. Yeah. And of course, we saw similar, I guess, in the ADP yesterday, which is just another survey measure which the market usually uses as a guide to today's payrolls data. But again, growth, but a slight downside miss. So again, an indication of cooling. Yeah, and I think what we also saw within that data is some of the um, wage inflation numbers what, from what the ADP had gathered had started to cool, just given, once we've said, the normalisation. People aren't looking to quit jobs as frequently and therefore companies are less willing to pay or so pay for that. So let's, let's update now a bit on the market reaction. So I was slightly surprised by the way the equity market reacted to the jolts data at the start of the week. It seemed to take that quite negatively. What context would you provide on basically the equity versus bond reaction this week? Yeah, so we've seen, as you've said, Kevin, uh, equities have reacted uh, more negatively where we've seen slightly weaker equity markets over the month. Um, but fixed income markets have actually very well yeah, yeah performed very well so i guess from our perspective as multi-asset investors quite pleased that we're actually seeing bonds act as a diversifier against that equity risk within the portfolio so provide somewhat of an offset to those falls within equities equities are probably looking at the data thinking that's slightly weaker than what we expected is there any read through for gdp growth i guess at least from our perspective kevin we think that the data is still pretty good. Well, it's still showing growth, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, still so positive. It's, it's actually quite healthy for this idea that we're going to get non-inflationary growth ahead. Something um, I've been thinking about, and we've discussed this with colleagues earlier today, is we're going to get that first rate cut in the US in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. But in terms of the market expectations for the next year, it looks like the markets are pricing a lot. What context would we give to the pricing today versus history? Yeah, so it's... You know, the amount of cuts that the market's got priced is at a 25-year high relative to previous cycles and previous uh, interest rate cutting cycles from the Fed. So fixed income markets have actually priced a lot, and it's a yeah. combination of what we've just talked about with the employment, but also where we've seen inflation get to, where we seem closer to the central bank's target, not just only in the US, but more globally. So central banks more comfortable with where the inflation dynamics got to. And I think that's the key. It's we possibly look at fixed income markets, bond yields, and think it's telling us something about growth, but it might actually be telling us something constructive about inflation. That is, with inflation somewhere between 2 to 3%, having interest rates close to 5.5% in the US is just not appropriate, and that we should actually expect substantial rate cuts in the year ahead, but maybe not at the pace that's currently expected. Yeah, so markets at the minute thinking about four rate cuts, come the end of 2024 and given the fact we've only got three more Fed yeah. meetings 
that implies that one of those meetings should be a half percent cut rather than the typical format of a 25 basis point. So fixed income markets actually seem quite yep. optimistic about the prospect of interest rate cuts to come. So on that, so I mean, the context from all of these surveys on employment is really that we're still seeing jobs growth. It's just that yep. it's slowed markedly over the course of this cycle and that this is allowing unemployment to normalise a bit. So unemployment's rising, but just because there's fewer jobs being created, the one thing we're not seeing in any of the Western economies really is any material job losses. So I think context for our viewers here is important. So what we've put together for you here is just a look back since 1974 of annualised US jobs growth. That's the chart you'll see on screen. And there's a couple of other features of the chart. First of all, you'll see in the, the vertical lines are actually, they indicate previous US recessions. And what you'll notice is that whenever we've entered a recession, that jobs growth data has started to fall quickly and sometimes it's gone negative. And that really means people losing their jobs in a recession. But notice where we are today, we've actually got quite healthy jobs growth. Annualised, it's about 1.6% a year. Even more importantly, we've marked on it what's the average over the last 40 years, and you'll see that we're above the average. So we're above that green dotted line. So it's very difficult to believe, actually, that we're anywhere near a recession in the US when we're seeing jobs being created, healthy jobs growth, not just healthy, but above the average. And as you said, Matt, we've got an unemployment rate, which is well below the 20 year and the long run average. So all in all, things look quite good. It's possible that equity markets are probably just a bit too downbeat and maybe are just taking a breather before that first rate cut in two weeks. Yeah, and I guess we've just come through um, earnings season as well. Yes. And none of the corporations that have reported are really talking about um, staffing cuts. Exactly, so yeah. So that's something we screen here. We look at management earnings updates just to see for references to job cuts. Didn't really appear at all no. in the Q2 earnings call. So altogether... A fairly constructive end to the week for markets with the US jobs data showing strong growth and also that we're still seeing uh, unemployment anchored close to 4% but just above. So it's very much a US focus this week. Please join us for Morning Markets next week where we'll take more of a UK focus because we're going to look forward to UK jobs data and UK inflation data. Please do like and subscribe on our YouTube channel and most importantly, please do enjoy your weekends. Thank you. This video is not a recommendation or personal financial advice. With investing, your capital is at risk. Investments can fluctuate in value and you may get back less than you invest.